Good morning, folks. We have good news and we have bad news. The solar storm is likely approaching its final stages here. We still have at least one shock wave still on its way to Earth. The network disruptions stayed minor, regional, and are beginning to drop out. Our forecast for what to expect was pretty accurate, but some of the effects we did see are concerning. Looking at the last 24 hours on our star reveals the first day in about a week we didn't get a significant solar flare. We do have two new sunspot groups we'll need to monitor in the days ahead. We expect that shockwave from the final eruptions to impact at some point in the next 24 hours and reignite the solar storm conditions. For now, we are seeing the geomagnetic disruption begin to drop back. We did take a small enhancement in the solar wind overnight, but it was very small and with favorable magnetic fields embedded within it. But after a brief period where several infrastructure sectors saw glitches yesterday, including electrical fires on power poles and substations, which caused internet outages and power outages, things are calming down until those final blows arrive. Looking back at our forecast, we got exactly what was expected. Mostly localized disruptions to infrastructure, regional up to nationwide glitches in minor systems and networks, now, it's time for the meteorological and seismic watch as the Earth capacitor decides what to do with all this extra energy it just took in. That watch is over the next week. Now, here's the bad news. Took another low-latitude auroral event, and it well exceeded expectations, not just Florida, Texas, and Arizona. Visibility in Mexico and even in Puerto Rico. That has not happened in 103 years. And to show you what I mean, here is a little chart. Years of important solar storms, the X-class flare rating, if it is known for the event, and the DST on the right, the disruption to Earth's magnetic field. The yellow events are the ones that drove Aurora down to Puerto Rico, and while it's obvious why the 1859 and 1921 events did it, how did it happen this year with a small storm by comparison? Remember, the X5.8 blast still has not reached us. These were pretty minor by comparison. The 2003 storm, for example, had an X-45 and several others above X-10. This storm over the weekend was big, but not so big it should have driven Aurora to Puerto Rico. Now, I have seen some people suggesting that, oh, it's just cameras nowadays are better. Well, that forgets that the visibility loss due to light pollution is now anywhere from 50 to 300 percent higher than the enhancement in visibility due to camera exposures. Just ask any astrophotographer. This should not have happened. And the only explanation is the same one that applies to the other unprecedented geomagnetic and auroral events over the last year. Earth's magnetic field is weaker. The pole shift underway now has left Earth far more vulnerable to events from the sun, and we are entering the next geomagnetic excursion and disaster cycle of Earth. For all of these new viewers here, let us re-watch our critical update on that from May 2nd, which includes a lot of archive footage as well. Folks, it's not that the sun is breaking records, it's that Earth is in trouble in a magnetic way. Time to learn what's really going on. Ears open, folks. This is important. Folks, it's not stopping. The auroral displays are completely out of control, and if we weren't several years into clown world, I'd be shocked the media isn't discussing it. We mentioned it this morning. The 2003 Halloween solar superstorm produced low-latitude aurora down to the southernmost states. This has happened before, but not often and it takes major X-class solar flares, extreme speed CME plasma striking Earth, and top-level geomagnetic storms. I went ahead and looked up the times that Aurora were seen in the southernmost states, and here is a brief list going back to the Carrington event of 1859. The top lines are ones that happened in the same solar cycle. They certainly seem to be getting more common as time goes on, even as light pollution makes them harder and harder to see. This fact alone is a signal that Earth's aurora are getting more extreme, and with the fact that solar activity is not breaking any records, it confronts normalcy bias and reminds us this is exactly what we are expecting as Earth's magnetic field weakens in the ongoing excursion and magnetic pole shift. From 2018 to 2020, we said over and over, we'll be needing to closely monitor the aurora in the upcoming solar cycle to see if the trend continues certainly has. 
Just this year, we've had several events. In September, a solar storm which was not major, which was not triggered by an extreme speed shockwave, and which had no X-class solar flare, caused the auroral activity to be visible from Arizona. The same thing happened in August. Once again, no X-class flare, the solar wind was moderately strong at best, and the geomagnetic storm didn't even hit KP7. But aurora were visible in Arizona nonetheless. The storm in April was fairly strong, but still not at the top level disruption, still no mega CME or X-class flares, and yet the aurora were visible in Mexico and southern Texas. It happened in March as well, again, from a solar event that was only moderately strong, but which produced a fairly strong geomagnetic storm, still not top level, yet aurora were visible from New Mexico, and a few reports even came in from Florida. Folks, there has never been any year where far southern aurora were seen as many times as we've just had. This is a record, and the year's not over yet. What's worse is that the geomagnetic storms have not hit the top-level disruption, and the solar activity that triggered them was moderately strong at best. We've said it before, let's say it again. The Earth is becoming more and more vulnerable to solar activity. I would never deny the significance of the ongoing economic issues, potential for World War III, loss of freedom due to governments in the World Economic Forum pulling their Agenda 2030 nonsense, but folks, despite the evidence being right in our faces, the media is completely ignoring what is happening to the Earth. The magnetic pole shift and geomagnetic excursion are progressing, and in the coming years, we're going to lose all modern technology and the foundations of modern civilization. Doesn't get much worse than this, especially since other real global issues seem to be overshadowing it completely in the public forum. We've seen this evidence in the magnetic field itself, the polar motion, the ionosphere and the atmosphere. Alas, now an auroral record has fallen. The sun isn't doing anything crazy, so it once again shows us another sign that Earth's geospheres are in big trouble and us along with them. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone. Folks, just five days after that video was posted, it happened again. Of all the evidence we've seen so far, the auroral records being obliterated in a modest solar activity year was really something else. So needless to say, with the auroral records breaking, the unexpectedly strong solar storms, the observers knew that the magnetic pole shift we've been tracking closely for more than a decade had kicked into a higher gear. Then our friend, Sergei Simonenko, one of the best Earth scientists in Russia, came out and said what so many top scientists are saying behind closed doors. Not only are we entering the pole shift, the magnetic reversal, the reset of the disaster cycle in the next age of Earth, but we had a tremendous magnetic anomaly resulting in the acceleration in March of 2023. This perfectly explains why things are accelerating at an alarming rate now and why the unexpected has become the expected. In our book that came out late last year, we expected something like that paper to come out. Our key graph from the magnetic field loss had estimated that 2023 was our inflection point, where the gradual curve took a steeper bend and we began the long drop down to the catastrophe. With Sergei's new paper, we now know that it was the magnetic anomaly and acceleration that drove the auroral records and unexpectedly high KP index of solar storms. We had accelerations in the 1960s, the year 2000, 2006, 2015, 2018, 2020, and then this big one in 2023. It means we are likely only one or two major accelerations away from hitting criticality, where the field loss and pole shift go to the 100x rate of change, We'll only have months left when that occurs. Of course, what happened just a few days ago was a sign that all our assumptions and then that published conclusion are not wrong. A level one expectation was a weaker impact than expected, but proceeded to produce level three storm conditions and level five solar energy penetration into the atmosphere. There are critical resource links for you to learn more in the description box below the video. Subscribe, and I will see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone. Okay, we're back to today. This morning, we saw yet another indication that the acceleration in the magnetic pole shift caused unprecedented effects. 
We often discuss the CME compression of the magnetic field and the penetrating particles and how those are going to be amplified in this process, increasing ionospheric conductivity and space weather storms. That appears to be what happened in a major way in the April 2023 solar storm. That would be what you see here in the animation we often use in these contexts, more particle penetration down into the upper atmosphere. Moreover, this was unlike most auroral outbreaks as it was confined, indicating that the plasma found a crack, a weak spot in the field, driving the unusually strong and short-lived event. At the end of the day, it's always a big deal when they think we're seeing something brand new in space weather, which points to the weakening magnetic field. But when we remember that this wasn't exactly a major X-class solar flare, it was modest space weather only, it is again a double whammy. Lesser space weather causing not only greater effects, but causing novel impacts to the geodynamic system. Folks, this is the first time I'm saying this, but due to the wild space weather of 2023 continuing into this year and the recent confirmation of that acceleration in 2023, I really have no choice but to slightly modify the forecast timeline. I have been saying that the final magnetic flip aspect would be in the 2040s, and I've had pretty high confidence. But now we have to begin to recognize the chance for it to be sooner. Now make no mistake, if we don't get any more of those major accelerations, it will be in the 2040s. But something like what happened last year, if it happens again in the coming years, could truly amplify the speed of the shift and could push up the timeline. This is not the time to fall asleep or falter. It's time to dig deep and get prepping now, especially since things will be getting rough before the final moments of the flip. I will see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.